Ventilation and diffusion. First, let's start with ventilation. Diffusion. Diffusion also has to do with oxygen and carbon dioxide, but here we're looking at the alveolar level. The alveoli are surrounded by capillaries. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli to the capillaries, and oxygen then tries to diffuse to all the cells in the body. The carbon dioxide is trying to escape the body through the lungs, so it diffuses from the capillaries into the alveoli and then out of the body. Now, surfactant is crucial in all of that. In order for the gas exchange to occur, the alveoli must stay open. They must not collapse at the end of each expiration, and that's what surfactant actually does. Once in the capillaries, oxygen binds with hemoglobin. The iron acts as a magnet, drawing the oxygen to the hemoglobin. And once attached to the hemoglobin, the oxygen is transported throughout the body. Ventilation versus diffusion. Ventilation requires patent tubes, the bronchi, the bronchioles, they all have to be open. Diffusion relies on accessible and permeable membranes down in the alveoli. Now in general, ventilation and diffusion problems, we see um, these, these uh, uh, manifestations. Cough, mucus, hemoptysis, dyspnea, orthopnea, adventitious lung sounds, use of accessory muscles, chest pain, barrel chest, and systematic manifestations such as fever. Most diseases have a ventilation and a diffusion component. Selected disorders, pneumonia, Pneumonia is an infectious process. It's spread by respiratory droplets, and it causes inflammation in the lungs. It occurs commonly in the bronchioles, interstitial lung tissue, or the alveoli. So it has a ventilatory and a diffusion component. Products of inflammation accumulate and cause consolidation. So, the bacteria or the virus invades. At that point, the body resets its hypothalamic thermoregulation center and we will see fever and chills. Regardless of it, whether it's a virus or a bacteria, we see fluid in the lungs, so we're going to have cough, purulent yellow or bloody sputum, we'll hear crackles, and there will also be a decrease in breath sounds with the consolidation. This fluid causes inadequate gas exchange, so we'll see tachypnea, among other things. Tuberculosis. TB is caused by um, mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is an airborne droplet spread, and they travel directly to the terminal bronchioles and alveoli of the lung. There is inflammatory and cellular immune responses, and we see three stages, containment, multiplication, and dormancy. 
The clinical manifestations, if we have chronic inflammation, we're going to see malaise, weight loss, fatigue, anorexia, a low-grade fever, and possibly night sweats. Night sweats tends to be one of those red flags that makes us look at the person and think, eh, maybe they got TB. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Obstructive lung disease is a problem of ventilation. Obstruction blocks the ventilation. Now there's three basic categories here. The first one is mechanical obstruction of the airways. That can be from foreign bodies, tumors, or chronic mucus plugging that occurs in chronic bronchitis. The second is increased resistance in the airways. Examples here are airway thickening from chronic inflammation, again, in chronic bronchitis. And the third type is increased tendency for airway closure. This is a component of both asthma and emphysema. All of these obstruct exhalation. Okay, asthma. It's intermittent or persistent airway obstruction. Quite often it's because of allergens in the environment, but again, we often don't know what is causing it in an individual. It is characterized by bronchial hyperresponsiveness. That means um, the level of allergen has to be quite low in order for the bronchioles to over-respond. You know, what would normally cause a little response in a normal person will cause a big response in someone with asthma. There's bronchial constriction, inflammation, and excess mucus production. The alveolar ducts and the alveoli remain open, but the air flow into and out of them is obstructed, so air is trapped inside. Cystic fibrosis. It's a hereditary disorder characterized by lung congestion and infection and malabsorption of nutrients by the pancreas. It's an autosomal recessive disorder of chloride and water transport affecting certain epithelial cells, especially the respiratory, digestive, and reproductive lining. We see de dehydration and a thick, tenacious mucus in the lungs and GI tract. The thick mucus is a good medium for bacterial growth, so the inflammation and infection occurs in different body systems. Respiratory failure is the most common cause of death. 